Exodus chapter 33, verses 15 and 16. Let me repeat. Moses said to him, that's to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Praise God. Moses was trying to let God know that he, Moses, understood that the presence of God is the most important asset on earth. And he says, if this presence does not go with us, we will not make a move. We will not take a step because it is the distinguishing factor between the favored and the non-favored. It is what will be a mark of demarcation between the people of God and others. He says, how will other people know we are special if not with your presence? I pray that the presence of God will make a special mark in our life. Amen. Will go with us in all our endeavors Amen. and bring us to the right place we are supposed to be. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the presence of God Hallelujah, in the presence of God. Hallelujah, in the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah, in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, oh Hallelujah, John. Hallelujah, John. I say Hallelujah, John. Hallelujah, John shall be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, that's it. We should be seated in the presence of the Lord. When brother was asking us at the beginning, where are you? I told the brother, asked me, I am in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody by your side, you are welcome. You are welcome. As we are looking at the presence of God, our text from Psalm 114, from verse 1 to 7, the topic says the nine portals of divine presence. The nine portals of divine presence. A portal simply means an entrance, an entrance, an entry point or a means of entry. In Greek, it is called Tura. And Tura means door or gate. By extension, it means access or opportunity. So when we're talking about the nine portals of divine presence, we are trying to just look at nine ways through which we will be able to encounter God. Why are we at this desert? Because we have come to encounter God. Is God not in our houses? Is God not everywhere? So why did we choose to come here? Because according to the church, the captain of the church said that though God is everywhere, he chooses the places to be encountered. Those places of encounter is what are called portals. Nine portals, if you like all its doors or gates. Nine portals of divine presence. Nine portals of the presence of God. So let's look at our text. Psalm 114 from verse 1. Psalm 114 from verse 1. Amen. Amen. When the people of Israel left Egypt, when Jacob did this time left the earth for the land, Judah became the Lord's holy people. Israel became his only portion. Verse 2. The Red Sea looked and ran away. The river Jordan stopped flowing. 
Verse 4. The mountain is kept like goats and hill jump like and jump about like lambs. What happens seek to make to make you run away? And you a and you O Judah. Oh Judah, why did you Jordan. Oh Jordan. Why did you stop flowing? You mountains, why did why did you skip like goats? You hills, why did you jump jump about like land? Verse 7. Tremble earth at the Lord's coming, at the presence of God of Jacob. At the presence, it's okay. At the presence of the God of Jacob. The Bible is trying to give us insight into what happened when the people of God, the Israelites, the people of God, according to the Old Testament, we are coming up out of Egypt. The Bible said that the sea saw them and began to run away. That when Jordan saw them, he divided, he parted, he gave away. When the mountains, mountains supposed to be obstacles, saw them, the mountain began to run like an animal. And the psalmist said, See, what did you see <laughs> that make you to give way? Is it Moses' staff that has no life? What did you see, oh Jordan, that make you to part? Mountain, what made you to, be, to develop legs in spiritual way and begin to run? And he says, it is the presence of the God of the whole earth. Someone say presence. Yes. We have come to talk about something that is the most important thing in your life. Every one of us here has one need or the other. Every one of us here has one challenge or the other. Every one of us here has one mountain or the other. But there is something that a mountain will see and run. And so what we have come to share today is something that is very, very important. Something that is very, very needed in our lives. Something that is the solution to the challenge you are facing right now. We are talking about a situation that no opposition can withstand. We are talking about a condition that even though there may be challenges, they will begin to dissolve and melt on their own. And that is what we call activated presence of God. Activated presence of God. We are going to get there. When you put uh, sugar in a cup of tea, you want to take tea, it is said that the sugar will just go and settle at the base of the cup or jug or whatever you are using. So you need to stir it in order to activate the presence of the sugar. In order so that it will not give what it's supposed to, to give. Meaning that it's not enough to have put sugar. If it's not activated, you may not have the, enjoy the, the, the tea. And that is why, even though we're talking about the presence of God as the answer, as the solution, there's nobody here who does not have the presence of God. But we want to go a step further. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us look at the nine portals. Portal number one is what we call the universal presence of God. Open to Psalm 139. The universal presence of God. Or what is known as the omni presence nature of God. And Psalm 139, if you read verses 7 through 12, can we read it? We may not read everything, but we'll just read few. Anybody here? Psalm 139. Where shall I go from thy presence? Where shall I go from your presence? From your spirit. From your spirit? Oh, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? How can I run away from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Mm -hmm. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the ut uttermost parts of the sea, verse 10, even there, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth 
not from thee. But Darkness the cannot hide from God, yes? But the night shineth as the day. It's okay. Where can I run away from the presence of God? When we talk of the omnipresent nature of God, universal presence or omnipresent nature of God, everybody knows God is everywhere. God is up, God is down. God is besides, God is beneath, God is above. When you talk of heavens, when you talk of the earth, when you talk of hell, some you say, even if I make my bed in hell, God is there. There is nowhere. Where will you go that you will not find God? Who made that place you are going? It is God that created the place. It is God that made that place. So how can you say you have run away from God? So the first thing we should know is that God is everywhere. And because he is everywhere, his presence can be activated everywhere. So but we are trying to look at the nine portals of accessing this presence of God. Number two is what I call the word presence of God. The word presence of God. Or the meditated presence of God. Open to John chapter 1. Or open to John chapter 10 verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In principio erat verbum. Et verbum erat apud deum. Et deus erat verbum. In the beginning was the word. And this word was with God. And this word was God. The word of God is God. So approach to the word of God is approach to God. Access to the word of God is access to God. If you can handle the word of God, you are communing and communicating with God. Many people do not know that there is a difference between the letter and the spirit of the word. That this word of God is God in physical form. Praise God. And this word of God is what the Bible says in verse 14 of the same John chapter 1. Et verbum caro factum est inhabitavit in nobis. That this word later became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That means there is a becoming in the word of God. This word became flesh. So if you understand that the word is a person, the word is Jesus Christ. The word is God. Access to the word will be access to God. And that is why the word can be sent. The word can be given a message. You can stay here and send the word because the word is spirit. Who is in John chapter 9? Let's look at, I mean, chapter 10. Let's look at verse 9. Hallelujah. Um, I am the door. Mm-hmm. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find the pastor. I am what? I am the door. I am the door. Everyone say door. door. That is the word to I get. You mean that the word of God is a door through which you enter the presence of God. And he says, anyone that enters in through me, he will find the pasture. He will go in and out and find what he or she is looking for. I may not know exactly what you are looking for, but through the access point of the word of God, you will meet your need. You will find your need. You will see what you are looking for. In the name of Jesus, he says, I am the door. So the second portal for divine presence is the word presence. And that is why you don't need to, you don't have to read the word of God as you read other literature, as you read newspaper. You read it meditatively because that is a person talking to you. The word of God is not just literature, other books that have no life. You don't say the word of God is the spirit and his life is alive. When you have opportunity to come before the word, you can ask the word a question and receive answer from the word. Because the word is a person. It carries the presence of God. So that is the second portal. Opportunity you have. Lock your door and say, God is me. And you open the pages. It is in the sacred pages. 
you encounter the rock of ages because he is there in the world. The number three portal is what I call the temple presence. First Kings chapter 8. Let's look at verses 10 through 13. First Kings chapter 8. Temple presence. That means the house of God. Chapter 8, verses 10 to 13. Hallelujah. Amen. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. When the priests came out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. The cloud filled the house of the Lord. So that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. Uh huh. But the glory of the Lord. Had filled the house of the Lord. The glory of the Lord has filled the house of the Lord. Then spake Solomon. The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. Mm -hmm. I surely built thee a house to dwell in. I have built you a house to dwell in. A settled place for thee to abide in forever. A place is okay for you to abide in, to live in. Forever. That is First Kings chapter eight. When Solomon was dedicating the temple he built in Jerusalem, he said, "This is a place I have built for God to settle forever." Meaning that any time you go there, you will encounter God because He's there forever. The house of God. But what made get my attention? He said that when the temple had been built, God came to take possession of it, and the glory of God. Filled the place such that even the priests could no longer perform their duty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Queer, because God has possessed his house. Now the question is, juxtaposing this place with 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says we are now the temple of God. Mm -hmm. We are now the house of God. We should not be looking for God anywhere. If you are looking for God, come and meet me. I carry him. I am the portal. I am the present. I am the, the house of God. So 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, Stop thinking, hey, how will I now go to Jerusalem to go and see that temple? That uh, so He says, you are. Your body is the temple of God. And the spirit of God is living in you. Excuse me. Is if you don't know that your body is his temple, that's when your body will have challenges. Praise God. Amen. If you have not dedicated that, that temple of God to God, it was not when Solomon built the house that God possessed it. But after building the house, Solomon dedicated that house unto God. He submitted that house unto God. He surrendered that house. Unto, he invoked God. Take it. I'm handed over. Have you handed this temple over to God? Excuse me. When you hand this temple over to God, God cannot possess it and cancer will possess it. That is why the solution to whatever you are looking for today is the activated presence of God. When, Moses, when, when Solomon was dedicating the temple, he was activating the presence of God. And the presence manifested in the form of the glory that even work had to stop. If flies are having the, their own desert outing on top of your pot of soup and you put it on fire. That means you're activating heat. The moment the heat is activated, no, you don't need to go and get broom to kill the fly. You don't go need to go and get insecticide to kill the fly. The activated heat will make the place unconducive for the fly. I may not know where that pain is disturbing you. Today, we are here to activate the presence of God. I may not know what the challenge is in your eyes that you are not seeing well. Your ears are not hearing well. You cannot activate the presence of God in your life and they say you are carrying fibroid. The presence will make the fibroid to melt. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. If you are a student, you need to carry the presence of God to school. When you carry this presence to the school, no awkward person will harm you in the school. If they say people don't make it in this office, People are they're getting disturbed in this office. Juju is disturbing people in this office. Not when you are around. Not when you carry the presence of God. Not when this body is possessed by the presence of God. How can it be possessed by rheumatism again? Somebody say I reject it. I reject it. So you need to activate the presence of God. 
My business is no longer flowing. You need to activate the praise of God. As we leave this place, you come, you say, we have come. Someone say, we have come. We we have come. come. When you call the praise of God, you stop speaking in the first person singular. You begin to speak in the first person plural, according to English language, for those who understand. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. You don't say, I am coming. No, you say, we are coming. I am here. No, we are here. Because you carry God. You are the temple. Someone say, I know who I am. I know who I am. So as I'm talking now, Ezekiel, the Bible says, while Ezekiel was prophesying, both there was a noise. There was a regalvanization of things that both began to locate their own members. That is the, that's how the word of God brings healing. We understand that this word of God is God. And you activate it. So the potter is the temp, the third one is what we're talking about now. The temple presence of God. And we are the temple of God. We are the house of God. You know, I always tell you that we are God's landlord. So when they say meeting of landlords, be the first person to show up. They say, who is your tenant? I say, capital G-O-D. is my tenant. I might tell me communicating. Praise God. Temple presence. You carry God. Number four. The fourth portal is called fellowship presence. Prophetic presence, atmospheric presence, worship presence, any name you call it. Praise God. Amen. Open to First Samuel chapter 10. Fellowship presence or prophetic presence or atmospheric presence or worship presence simply means what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. He says, where to? Or three are gathered in my name. You will find me there. My presence will be there. Are we here in his name? Yes. We don't need to. Nobody should start prophesying. Uh, I am with you. We know it. We know it. It's not a prophecy that he's with us. It's a reality. Matthew 18, 20. He said, we are two or three. Are gathered in my name. You will find me there. Someone say God is there. God is here. If God is here and you understand that God is here, will your sickness refuse God to, to handle it? Will that challenge refuse God? All you need is open that your challenge to God. Say, God, I know you are here, but take this challenge. I open it up to you. So you have to be conscious of where you are. I'm talking of that challenge that brought you here. I'm talking of that challenge that is disturbing you. I'm talking of that thing that makes you not to sleep in the night. Lay it before the Lord. And let us see who can battle with the law. First Samuel chapter 10. Is anybody there? Yes. Verses 10 and, and 11. Amen. Amen. Another person, First Samuel 19. When Samuel and uh, his servants arrived in at, arrived at Gaden, a group of prophets arrived, a group of prophets met him. Suddenly the Spirit of God looked looked control on of him and he and he joined in the instantly dancing and shouting hallelujah Verse 11 okay people who had known him before before saw him saw kish kish has <laughs> someone become a prophet it's okay death. what has become of the son of kish has the soul also become a prophet what is happening here it's about this person that everybody knew in the community. He does not belong to the prophetic lineage. He was not in the prophetic seminary. But all of a sudden, by association, when he came into a prophetic presence, the prophetic grace of God came upon him. The presence of God rubbed off on him that he began to prophesy. That's what we mean by fellowship presence. Prophetic presence. He came into the presence of the people that carried the presence. And what they carried rubbed off on him. He began to prophesy. And people were marveled. When did Saul become a prophet? That is what we call contagious anointing. That means when you come into the presence of people who carry something, you start manifesting that thing. Even if he's not there in you. 
because of that presence. And that is why today, some people can prophesy, even though they have never prophesied before. It's because they are in the company of others. Somebody say, I can just open now and you begin to see what you have not been seen before because of you are in the presence or in the company of other people. First, uh, Samuel 19, yes, verses 19 through 24. Amen. Amen. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at now in mm -hmm. Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over, over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. Mm -hmm. And so I sent messenger, messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Shekhu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naut in Ramah. And he went to that now in Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to now in Ramah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So can you continue? Verse 24, and he stripped off his clothes also, and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and, played, and lay down naked all that day, and all that night. Wherefore they say he saw also among the prophets. It's repeated. This is somebody that was looking for an enemy to kill called David. But David ran to a man of God. What we call the as you are looking at the nine portals of divine presence. Hmm. And before to one is called fellowship presence or prophetic presence or atmospheric presence or worship presence or contagious presence. That means when you contact the presence of God, because you are in the company of people who have this presence of God manifesting. He sent soldiers to go and arrest David. When the soldiers came, they dropped their weapons, their AK-47, and began to dance prophetic dance. And began to prophesy. The commander would turn to the captain. Say, Captain Rasoto Kondoko. The captain would turn to the corporal and say, Rasundele Emayanda. And when the news got back to the soul, uh, the soldiers you sent have been converted. <laughs> <laughs> they have become men of God. You see, I, I don't believe it. He sent another group of soldiers. Shoot in sight. Capture David. They are alive. And uh, immediately they come into the ambient, the ambience, the focal point of the radiance of the glory mm. of the prophetic unction. The same thing happened. They all dropped that this thing. Some use their own and use it as guitar. So I say we should go and carry David. So I didn't know that David is under another power. If you carry the presence of God, no hell's man can kidnap you. Yes, sir. When you activate this presence of God, I know I'm driver will kill you. Am mm. I talking to somebody? Yes, it happened. Paul still sent the third group. So I say I. Soldiers that are trained, no. You see, I see commander in chief. He said, I'm going. As he was going, just like from that place where I packed, where we packed our vehicle, the Bible says, From there, his own started far. He started prophesying. As he was prophesying, he was looking for where they are. <laughs> Before he got there, the prophetic grace, because the more people join, the more the grace enlarges. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. So the thing has expanded that he got in magnetic so that's in the sign that what is known as magnetic field. If this is a magnet, if you don't come into the magnetic field, you will not see, you will not catch you. But the magnetic field has expanded. So came and joined them. He saw the person he wanted to carry and went to him and said, <laughs> he, his own was so multiplied. That he didn't know when he began to dance. He removed his shoes. You know a king mm. have different wears. He removed the jacket. He removed, the Bible says he, as he was praying, he was removing his clothes. Nothing should disturb me in the presence of God. Nothing. 
You know when David danced and became naked? When you understand the presence of God, food will not matter. When you come into the presence of God, house rent cannot interfere. When we activate the presence of God, nothing will matter anymore. That he was a king, he said that was yesterday and before the king of all kings. He removed everything. And the Bible says he prophesied from that day till night. He forgot the throne. He forgot the food. He forgot his enemy. And from that till night, and prophesied till the following day. I cannot pray for 10 minutes. It's because the presence of God has not been activated. What will I be saying for 30 minutes? It is because the presence of God has not been activated. And it is because you cannot pray for 10 minutes that the devil brings a 12 minute challenge over you and it will overcome you. Can I talk to somebody? Yes, sir. When your prayer is 10 minutes, problem of 8 minutes cannot overcome you. If your prayer is 30 minutes and the devil knows, you can look for a problem of 35 minutes. If your prayer is one hour, no challenge of 30 minutes can overcome you. Someone say, I need to pray. pray. We're talking about the activated presence of God. The fourth portal is the contagious presence. Contagious, contagious. The fact that you are here, something will rub off on you. Because there are generals here. There are people here that carry that presence. And you cannot come here and go empty. In the name of Jesus. Let us run so that we can pray. The fifth portal of divine presence is what I call the manifested or the visible presence of God. The manifested. Go to Exodus chapter 40. The manifested or the visible presence of God. A.K.A. the glory presence or the doxa presence of God. Doxa means God in manifestation. That is the Greek word for glory. And you know that I know I have already given a teaching on the presence of God, what I call the divine triplets. The presence that gives birth to the glory, that gives birth to the power. And three of them are one. The glory is the manifestation of the presence. That means anytime God wants to be seen, he comes in his glory. The glory means the God you can see. That's the meaning of glory. God is here in his presence. But if he wants us to see him, he comes in his glory. So glory is that is the manifested presence of God. Or visible presence of God. And that is the meaning of dogza. Or glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Exodus chapter 40, read for us verses 34 through 38. Then a cloud covered the tent mm-hmm. of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Again. Because the cloud abode the error. Mm-hmm. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. And when the cloud was taken off from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward mm-hmm. in all their journeys. What is it? But if the cloud were not taken off, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken off. Hallelujah. Amen. They saw the glory came down, so they know God is here. And as long as God is in that tent, they don't make a move. If it is to stay there, 30 years, they will stay there. So when God wants them to break camp, God is the first person to break camp. God will move, they will follow. That was how they located their way into the land of promise. It was God leading them. We see, the Bible says it was leading them by a pillar of fire, a pillar of cloud, something mm-hmm. like that. That means they, there was something they were seeing to know where God wants them to go. But the Bible says because of the glory, even Moses could not do anything. That means when the presence of God comes upon you, no demon will work against your life and succeed. No demon of sickness, no spirit wife, no spirit husband has the right to take over your life, take over your body when that glory has enveloped you. That is why we need to activate the presence of God. Also, we disappear. On its own, when the presence is activated. So why I'm even teaching now 
begin to activate that presence in your life for your own healing, for your own deliverance. When you, the presence of God is activated, you don't need anybody to lay hands on you for you to be healed, for you to be delivered. The presence is the solution. Number six, the abiding presence of God. The indwelling presence of God or the abiding presence of God. Anybody who is a child of God has God in him. Hello? Mm -hmm. That God in him is a sign that you belong to God. It's not a sign that you will be victorious. So the abiding presence of God is God claiming this one belongs to me. If you don't know how to activate the presence of God, you will still carry God, but you will die in accident. But you are in the kingdom of God. That is the meaning of the abiding presence of God. It is a, a sign. It is a de deposit that is there permanent to show this. It's, 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 like, it's, it's like your son name. The son name you bear is, a, is what shows you belong to a social and social family. Whether you are living a good life or not, whether the family give you inheritance or not, but that son name shows you belong. That is the abiding presence of God. That you find in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he in you. He is in you, no doubt. But God does not operate in your life because he is in you. Until the presence is activated, he will still be in you. And you drink poison and poison will kill you. But he is in you. Praise God. So the indwelling presence of God is just a sign that you belong to him. If you understand the workings of the Holy Spirit and you cooperate with him dwelling, he will, trans he will give you transformation. That one is not for you to use to operate. It's just for you to know that you belong. It's a hope. Colossians 1.27 It says Christ in you. The hope of glory. It's a hope. But there's something to be done, which is where we are going, for you to see the glory. You just don't see the glory because it's in you. Praise God. So the indwelling or the abiding presence of God is the sixth portal of divine presence. Then the seventh portal is the garment presence or the overshadowing presence, which is the opposite of what I just been talking about. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a person is in two folds. We have the indwelling and the outpouring. The Holy Spirit within and the Holy Spirit upon. It is when the power comes upon you that you can do anything for God. It is when the Spirit, the power comes. That is why many people are sacramentalized. But they are not evangelized to understand how to activate the presence. Any child of God who is baptized have the first thing, the one I just was talking, Holy Spirit within. Even though the person will go and become an armed robber, the Holy Spirit is still within. Even though the person will say, I'm not born again, because many people don't even know that if we are baptized, born, even though he doesn't know, the Holy Spirit is still there. But, when somebody went, is to work for God, to preach, to teach, to pray, to evangelize, to sing, to perform, to heal, to deliver, to cast a demon, then you have, there's another portal known as the garment presence. Courage. The Holy Spirit will now come upon you like the clothes you are wearing. That is called the overshadowing presence or the garment presence, aka the outpouring. In Judges chapter 14, we will not read again because of time. In Judges chapter 14, if you read verses 5 and 6, Judges chapter 15, verses 14 to 16, Judges 14, 5 and 6, Judges 15, 14 to 16. A lion came to attack Samson. But Bible said the Spirit of God came upon him, clothed himself on him. And he tore the lion as if he's a lamb. Because the Spirit came upon him. They bound him. The priest said, Oh, let's kill him. Bible said the Holy Spirit came upon him. And the rope which they tied him, he did like a Hogan. It's not a Hogan that was the first one to break chain. He joined, uh, Samson. He broke it and picked one jaw, jaw bone, bone, and used to kill 1,000 soldiers. One bone. 
It's not like when David killed Goliath. Praise God. It's not about the what the weapon. It's not about the catapult. It's the presence. That is the victory. The victory is not in the method. It's in the presence. If he says sing praises, that is the method. It's in the presence. If he says if there's a Jericho war before you, he says blow up trumpet, that is the method. It is the presence. Everybody, Goliath was a giant before every other person. But the one who carried the presence, when he came, Goliath became a dwarf. This dwarf, one stone we handle you. You don't need to wear arm of a dwarf. Goliath was a giant before others. But the one who carried the presence, he was a dwarf. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, that challenge that is making you not to sleep is a giant before others. When the presence of God is activated, it will become a dwarf. You can just crush it and go. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, somebody shout of fire. Fire. Shout of fire. 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 In Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus, the Son of God, he said, The Spirit of God is where? Upon me. For he has anointed me to heal, to teach, to deliver. It's when the prince comes upon you that you can do the work of God. That you can operate and manifest ETC. Luke chapter 3 tells us after baptism, the Spirit came upon him like a dove. And John said in John chapter 1, verse 35. I did not know him, but the one that sent me to baptize told me the one you see the spirit come upon and stay is the one. And I saw that there it is. So when John said he must decrease, he must increase and I will decrease, he knew, he knew what he was talking about. He has seen the sign. God has already told him, this is the baptizer of the spirit. We are just a water baptizer. There's another higher dimension. So much our dimension. dimension. We're looking at the nine portals or dimensions of accessing the presence of God. The seventh one. The eighth one. The eighth one is delegated or represented presence. The delegated or represented presence of God. That you find in Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 to 21. God said to the people of Israel, I am sending my angel to go ahead of you. And this my angel carries my name. So if you see him, you have seen me. Praise God. He carries my name. So don't disobey him, Mo. You see, when you counter an angel, angelology is another teaching. There are categories of angels. There's angels that are called the angels of his presence. When an angel of his presence, those who represent God come, they speak in the first person. He will not say God will heal you. He will say I will heal you. Even if he can throw himself as an angel. But he speaks in the first person. He speaks as God. So he is a, a delegated presence of God. Once you see such an angel, you have seen God. Anything God will do for you, that angel will do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That you find in Exodus chapter 14. Verses 19 and 20. When the army of Pharaoh was coming, the Bible said the angel that was leading them went back. It was that angel that was that pillar of fire, you see. That God led it. It was the angel. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 7. Genesis chapter 16, verse 10. Verse 13. You see the manifestation of the angel. How he appeared to Hagar. And was telling Hagar, I we bless you. Is that angel? We say, I will bless your child. I have heard your cry. He was speaking in the first person. That means is God a manifestation. Genesis chapter 22, verse 11 to 12. And verse 15 to 16. It was the angel that said to, to the Bible said, the angel of God told Abraham, I have seen that you fear God. And he said, Since you did not withhold your son from me. From me. That means he's, he's talking as God. And then he now says, I swear that I will bless you. Something like that. He will speak. So if you encounter such an angel, you have seen God. He's God. In Genesis 18, when the three men, he said, Can I withhold from Abraham what I want to do? Can I withhold from Abraham? Praise the Lord. Daniel 
chapter 3. They said that Mr. Garabad Lego, we are to put into the fire. Before they enter the fire, you real, the fire of God, enter the fire of man and transform the fire of man into a condition. Praise God. That is God in manifestation. So it is the delegated presence of God that is being carried by angels and ministers. Men of God and women of God. They are God in the physical. Every child of God is God though. But we are talking about activated presence. That is why I may come closer to you and then you begin to feel so what you have not been feeling before. Because the presence is closer to you. If you start prayer now, you may not feel, feel like falling. But the moment I touch you, you fall. Why? Delegated presence. Praise the Lord. So there are men of God that are the God you see. And if you don't treat them well, you may lose what God has to give you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Delegated presence. Delegated presence. Very, very important. That is why God is always around you. In many ways. I'm showing different ways. So if you don't encounter him here, if you don't understand this way, understand it the other way. The last one, <laughs> which is where we are going to. The activated presence of God. Activated presence of God. I call it the called up presence of God. That makes the present to become the president. That makes the resident to become the president. What does that mean? All of us came. I was there. But that was moderate. He was in charge. All of a sudden, he went and called sister. Called up presence. Sister became in charge. Sister said, come closer. Didn't you obey? Why did you obey? Because she is now in charge. Because she has been called up. I obeyed her. When she finished, the Moreto called me up. That was not when I came, but that was when I was called up. So when I was called up, I became in charge. And I said, keep standing. With authority. Till we take the first reading. Why? I am now in charge because even though I was present before, I was I was a resident before, now I am the president. I have gone from just residing to presiding. When the Holy Spirit or the presence of God is within, he's just residing. When he comes upon, he's presiding. So there's something to be done for him to go from residing to presiding. That's the means of the called up presence of God or Activated presence of God. So we are summarizing so that we pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Activated presence. That is what we all need. There's nobody here who does not have the presence of God. But until it is activated, until I was called upon, all these things you are hearing me now. You, if you if didn't call me, you will not hear it. Two of us. So there's many things God has. But until you activate his presence, you still be looking for God. Where are you? You still be crying, weeping, wailing, lamenting, shedding tears. Why the solution is around you? It's even within you. It's here. God is here. Activated presence. That you find in Mark. Evangelum secundum Maku. Mark chapter 4. The Bible says in verses 35 to 39. They were in the same boat with Jesus. And the boat was about to sink. As long as they kept quiet, they were terrified. They were breathing, holding their breath in their hands. They were seeing their death in their front until they did something. What did they do? They activated his presence. They caught him up. Why did we bring you to this desert? Is it because you are not a child of God? No. To activate the presence of God. To activate the presence of God that you carry. The presence of God was with them in the boat. But he did not stop the storm. The challenge coming to you is not because of sin. Sin is part of it. So that if you are committing any sin, you run away. But many challenges that many Christians face is not because of sin. 
challenges are part of life. But when the presence is not activated, instead of overcoming the challenges, the challenges will begin to overcome us. Activated presence of God. Or the called up presence of God. I think we need to read 1 Samuel chapter 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5. Our, as we round off. Psalm 97. If you read verses 3 to 5, you see that at the presence of God, Mountain melts like wax. Everybody listen, you know. That mountain melts like wax does not mean that if it is true, then there will be no mountain everywhere. Because God is everywhere. So mountain only melts when this presence is activated. Even the devil goes to the presence of God. But when we activate the presence of God against the devil, the devil will run. But if the presence is not activated against the devil, the devil is comfortable in the presence of God. Meaning, if you come to church, there are many demonic forces. There are many demons in the church. In fact, they find the church a comfortable place. Jesus told us, made us to know. How did he make us to know? He said, when an evil spirit leaves the house of God, a temple, a human being, and is cast out to the desert, he will wander to the desert. He said, "Let me return to my former house." Say, "This desert place is not good to live. That's a place that is comfortable." <laughs> oh, man, be a child of God. He said he will return. If that person does not know how to activate the presence of God, the demon will go and call more people, and the problem will increase. You go and call more of the presence by what is known as demonic generosity. So demons, some demons are more generous than many Christians. Hey. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Somebody shout fire. 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 In Luke chapter 4, immediately Jesus, the Spirit came upon Jesus. He entered the, the temple without preaching. You know, he say, a demon possessed person began to shout, We know you. The first person to introduce Jesus in the public is demons. Say, even though your members don't know you, we know you. <laughs> you are the Holy One of God. Have you come to torment us? That, that time Jesus was 30 years. Why? That was when the presence of God was activated for minister. Probably has been going to sit down. I mean, sitting down beside that man, nothing happened. Maybe they have been showing, showing the sign of peace as we do in the church with that same man. But when the presence of God was now activated for ministry, the man could not stand the presence of God. Stand on your feet, everybody. The man could no longer stand, withstand the presence of God activated in the life of Jesus. Say, we know you. Okay, I said we should read the first Samuel 5. Yes. Right there. Verse Verses 2 and 4. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when day of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, mm -hmm. behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth mm -hmm. before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the arms, both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the church tree. It's okay. It's okay. We know the story. The people of Israel committed sin. They carried the presence of God to battle. But not only that they were killed, even the presence of God was kidnapped. Kidnappers kidnapped God from Israel. Praise God. Kidnappers. They have been doing a lot of things. They kidnapped God from Israel. The ark. And carry to God and submit to their own God. Say, we have conquered. They did not know that it was a sin that deactivated the presence of God. Get the story. It's not the presence of God that does wonders. It's the activated presence of God, which is where, which is where we are going, which is our topic. But when it left the people who committed that sin, the presence was now, this sin was like a blanket. So it left them, so the thing removed. So when they came the following day to thank their God for, capture, for kidnapping the God of the Israelites, their own God was lying down, face down, bowing in worship. 
speaking in spiritual language, telling God, don't mind those people. They don't have spiritual eyes. They don't know that me and you, we are not in the same, you know. But because they did not understand the language of their God, they, they thought it was rats that put, put their God down. They raised their God up, that God. They say, it is the God of Israel supposed to bow to you. Their God was crying. You even want to finish me? They didn't hear the spiritual language. They left. The following day, when they came, not only so that their God has fallen again, but this time he, the head cut off, the leg cut off. Why? The presence of God has been activated. What do we do? Let us carry the presence of God to that demonic shrine where they have kept our destiny, where they have kept our clothes, where they say we will not marry when others are marrying. That will not have children when others that are married like us are having children. That will not get job. That will not have peace in our families. That will not progress. The Bible says, Who is he that speaketh a thing? And he comes to pass. If the Lord has not ordained it, the level you are, do you think is God's best for you? I will enjoy your Christianity. That's why tonight, we have this moment, we have to activate the presence of God. How do we activate his presence? By meditation. By our words, confession, through prayers, by speaking in tongues, by sacrifice, by seed, by living a holy life. I'm only summarizing. By living a holy life. What are the benefits? Divine preservation. Victory. Isaiah 43, from verse 1. See, even if you pass through the fire, I will still be with you. You will pass through. Go through water. They will not drown you. I will be with you. You will scale through. First Samuel chapter 16. David was anointed. And the prince of God came upon him. He went and slew Goliath. Where is that Goliath challenging you? His head must roll today. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 14. He said, My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Somebody say rest. Rest. In your marriage, find rest. Amen. In your destiny, receive rest. Amen. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 12. The Bible said, Saul the king became afraid of his subject. When a president becomes afraid of a citizen, something is there. First Samuel 18, 12 says, Saul became afraid of David. And the Bible gave the reason. Say, because God was with David. The presence of God. Someone say the presence of God. Presence Your boss in the office will become afraid of you. Amen. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. Divine favor. He says, So you will meet two, three people carrying three loaves of bread. And he said, They will give you two. So that three of them will go and share one. And he said, You must collect it. Because it's divine favor. Just because of the presence he carried. Three people with three loads of bread said they will agree to give only you two. And he said, You must collect it. When the, the, when the presence is activated, favor becomes your portion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, Genesis 39, 2 to 5. Joseph was sold as a slave. And whilst even his master discovered that his favor is coming from the slave, and he, put, he elevated him. Because of the presence of God he carried. He went to the prison. Things changed in the prison. Because of the presence of God he carried. The answer we are looking for, no matter whatever we are, we are going to pray about, is summed up in activating the presence of God. Come closer. Come closer. Activating the presence of God. That is all we need today. Our bodies are the house of God. The temple of God. I summarize by letting us know the temple in Jerusalem has three portions. There is what is known as the outer court, the hekar. There is the inner court, the portico, the lamb. And then there is the devil, the holy of holies, the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. The outer court is known as the court of Gentiles, the court of women. When you are in the outer court, you see by the light of the sun, anything goes. And it's for everybody. But people who are consecrated into the priesthood are the ones who can enter the holy place. 
And when they go there, the light there is consecrated candle light in the altar. The altar of incense, incense. Burning perpetually. But then there is the, the Holy of Holies. It's only the high priest that is permitted to enter there. And there is no light there. And there is no darkness there. Why? The glory, the doxa, the radiance of God in the mercy seat, on the mercy seat is the glory of the Holy Ghost. It's done in light, in the of light. So where are you? In the outer court? Inner court? Or do you want to enter the Holy of Holies? In the Holy of Holies! In the outer court! You can go there with sin and even pray while you are in sin. No problem. Even in the holy place, you can go there with sin. No problem. But anytime sin crosses the curtain to enter the holy bah! the glory will slaughter. That is why if a high priest wants to enter the holy of holies, they will tie a rope. Because nobody is permitted to enter except the high priest. And there is only one high priest. So if he dies, even nobody will go to God. If you enter, the glory of God will kill. Praise God. Hallelujah. Activated presence. So they have to tie rope in case he enters there and is not what God kills him. They will use the rope to draw him. And consecrate another high priest who can enter. If sin cannot enter there, who told us if you can enter there with five brothers and still come out with five brothers? First thing the glory will do is to kill the five brothers. That challenge that brought you here. That pain, that sickness, that weakness that has refused to go, we have to expose it now before the holy of holies. It will be killed and it will be buried here. Amen. In the presence of God. Hallelujah. In the presence of God. Hallelujah. In the presence of Jesus. Of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, I say hallelujah, John. Hallelujah, I say hallelujah, John. Hallelujah, John. Everybody close your eyes right now. We are in the outer court. Hallelujah, but take another step. Enter the holy place. Refuse to stop at the holy place because the presence is waiting for you at the holy of holies. Enter there. No sickness will follow you. Go enter there and remain in your body. The glory will slaughter it. The glory will slaughter it. Moment of encounter. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. It's between you and your God. Let the presence come upon you now. It's already activated. Likara kashatata. Ekri dokura hataya. Mantele ke brokozunya. Ila gada ragaza gada. The door is open. The door is open. Go in. Go in. Go in. Enter. 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 Rika faya kata. Riko boko sekete. Eki gada gaya gada la bush. Makata le bragade. Ila bosinde. In the name of Jesus. Begin to move closer. In the spirit, not to me now. Closer in the spirit. The door is open unto you. The door of encounter. The door of encounter. You don't even need any man to touch you. Allow the glory to envelop you. The Bible says, when the glory enveloped the temple, even the priest could no longer operate. When the heat is activated upon the pot, flies can no longer have their out in there. Let that activation now. I may not know where it is holding you. Who can battle with the Lord? The Bible says, mountains melt like wax before the God of all flesh. You know, whatever is that your challenge, present it now before the presence of the Almighty. The Prince of the Almighty. The Prince of the Almighty. Even if it's an enemy that is pursuing you, bring that enemy here in the spirit. The glory will overtake them. They will go naked, they will forget you. Saul did not remember David anymore. When David brought him into the presence of Samuel, into the presence of God, contagious presence. 
You have cried enough. It's a time of triumph in his presence. Ah! And Jacob said in the Old Testament, I'll never let you go. Today is your own day of a special encounter. Oh Lord, we welcome the angels of your presence. We welcome the angels of our ministry. The hour has come, O oh Lord, for you to manifest that your presence, for you to demonstrate your power in our midst. You know our needs. You know where they have taken our destinies. You know we are sitting on our fire. Who is sitting on our joy? Who has vowed that we will not have peace? But the hour has come. Time to overthrow the wicked. The army of Saul, they had to lay down their weapon when they come into before your presence. Lord, manifest your presence. Glory. 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 Is it time to enter the Holy of Holies? Rakuna Hamayagada. Ekri do 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 do. Repakata lagada. Elekete. Divine touch in the holy place. The glory will shine on you. 